Oh, yeah. Oh, we're live. <laughs> I don't know why I got aggressive about it. <laughs> it's a very aggressive look. Oh, we're live. You didn't think Alpha Geek? We are now live on Alpha Geek. <clears throat> Yay! Hi, Alpha Geek. And... I don't see any important breaking stories quite right this second. So you guys ready? Yes. Ready, Teddy. Let's do this. So Justin Robert Young had to drop out at the last minute. Who wants to be Justin? Who wants to be Robert? <laughs> I want to be young. You want to be, we all want to be young, Jeff. <laughs> I want to be weird. All right, here we go. And in through the nose and out through the mouth. And remember, to find your inner peace, go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. And now, your moment of zen. This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, August 27th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Justin Robert Young uh, had an unavoidable appointment, but more than capably filling in, we have Ms. Allison Sheridan, host of the Nocilla Cast. Welcome back to the show, Allison. Hey, Tom, I was starting to think you were avoiding me because I was never on when you were on anymore. <laughs> no, we were just using you when you were most needed. <laughs> uh, but also joining us, uh, we're very happy to have Jeff Kanata, host of We Have Concerns. How's it going, man? Going great. How are you doing? Doing very well. I'm glad that we could all team up uh, to fill in for Justin Robert Young because there are three names. So it took three people. It takes three people. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Can I gush shameless, shamelessly about uh, about their show, Tom, for just a second? I oh, think yeah. I'll join we you. We Have Concerns is one of the funniest things I have ever listened to. The The episode you guys had about the uh, the mice running on the on the uh, spinning wheels out in the middle of the field, I actually did fall down laughing when I was running. Well, <laughs> you'd have to take that up with our lawyers. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, no I really appreciate it. That's very nice of you to say. The Schmidt Pain Index one, too. That was with the, the bullet thing where, where Anthony kept saying that, don't you really want to know what it feels like to get shot? <laughs> no, yeah. actually, I don't. The cool thing about that episode is that we did that right before Ant-Man, the movie, came out. And then the Schmidt Pain Index was all was over Ant-Man. I felt, I like felt we were so pressing. smart because yeah. I was a listener of We Have Concerns. I'm like, oh, I know awesome. the Schmidt Pain Index. Everybody <laughs> knows that. No, that's Everybody magic. Knows. That show is magic. The two of you are hysterical together. Thank you very much. Well, let's see how he does at the headlines. That wasn't meant to be a challenge. <laughs> CNET reports Apple sent out an invite to select journalists inviting them to the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco at 10 a.m. September 9th. The invite shows the top of the Apple logo on a blue field with multicolored drop shadows and the phrase, Hey Siri, give us a hint. Saying that phrase to Siri on an iPhone will result in various humorous but uninformative responses. And uh, GeekWire noticed in the po page announcing the stream of the announcement that not only Apple products will be able to play it, but also PCs with Edge on Windows 10 because it supports the HTTP streaming that Apple uses. Wow. You mean they're going to let the majority of their audience actually watch the uh, stream this time? Yeah, but not Chrome users. <laughs> they still aren't relenting on Chrome users. Hey, Siri, give us a hint. Automatically pre-orders the next iPhone for you. Just so you know. Just be aware of that. <laughs> oh, crap. You just did it. <laughs> you just did it to a bunch of people's plugged in iPhones. But, you know, good for sales. The economy nice. needs it. Right. Nice. Well, Fitbit remains the top selling wearable according to data collected by IDC. Reuters reports Fitbit shipped 4.4 .4 million units in Q2 of 2015. Apple has moved into second place with 3.6 million units shipped, and Xiaomi nabbed number three with 3.1 million. Garmin held on to number four with Samsung falling to fifth. Overall shipments of wearables tripled to 18.1 million. So good news for Fitbit that they're still on top, even though they just make fitness tracker and just uh, good news for Apple that they're rocketing up the charts here as well. Good news for Xiaomi uh, that they are also like hitting it hard. Real bad news for Samsung that they fell back beyond Garmin. Yeah, that is Fitbit. Fitbit is the Kleenex of fitness trackers, right? It, it, people say, I want a Fitbit, and sometimes they don't even mean Fitbit. At least yeah. that's my, my anecdotal experience. Do you want a watch or a Fitbit? And they, right. Yeah, they might mean any kind of tracker. I do wish, that, or I hope that uh, Apple catching up or even passing them will make Fitbit play nice with uh, the Apple Watch, though, because I loved the Fitbit community. I had so much fun torturing my friends and being tortured by my friends, and now I've got no social thing with it. I just sit there yelling at my own circles going, ah, but nobody to make fun of me. 
But do you need a Fitbit if you have an Apple Watch? I mean, the watch is supposed to do all of those things. But I, I don't have the community anymore. That's yeah. the piece I miss. So I don't well, know what Fitbit's thing, right? motivation would be to play with them. That's everything why I've heard is Nike Plus. Yeah, everything I've heard is is that uh, people still use Fitbit and often get wildly different results from their Apple Watch. So people are still sticking with Fitbit because that's the community that kind of feels more fitnessy, just in you know integrated fitnessy, and uh, the Apple Watch is like just to corroborate <laughs> almost. Yeah, right. it's not social at all, unfortunately. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. BBC News reports that Google has filed a formal response to antitrust accusations in Europe. Remember, they got an extension on this. Google claims traffic to aggregator websites has risen 227% over the past decade and points to a study it carried out that showed dozens of new price comparison services had begun operation in Europe. They're using that as evidence that, hey, we're not... We're not abusing the marketplace. Google also believes there's no legal or economic basis for treating it like a utility or a monopoly. And so therefore it should not be subject to antitrust allegations. Your move, EU Competition Commissioner Marguerite Vestager. <laughs> Looking at you, Marguerite. Always, you're always throwing it to Marguerite, Tom. I know. Well, ever since she took over the job anyway. <laughs> Is there a law that one of the big companies has to be in the middle of an antitrust thing with the EU at all times? It feels that way. It's like Microsoft handed the baton and said, Google, why don't you take this for a decade or so? Yeah, yeah. But we're Alphabet now. We can't, we're not, look over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which the letter are you suing, Europe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In which e alphabet? E and U? <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, the Verge reports that you can now post full-size landscape and portrait-size photographs on Instagram. Yay! While the default size will still be square, both the Android and iOS apps will now have a format button above the camera roll, which allows you to toggle between square and full-size images. Hooray, said your tallest cousin, and all your photos of the Burj Khalifa. Oh, yeah. Plus all the people who hate portrait pictures and are, you know, landscape-only snobs will be happy now because they won't have to take any portrait pictures ever. Well, that is Joe this... Crespi Sheridan always said he wouldn't join just because it had square photos, so now he wow. has to join. Is this the equivalent of Twitter saying, oh, you don't have to do 140 characters anymore? <sighs> sort of. Sort of. I, don't, I think the 140 character thing has more of an effect on how you communicate. Uh, and, and they did release the 140 character maximum on DMs recently, so there is right. a, a, an analog there, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I... I don't think Instagram's square requirement had as good of a creative effect as the 140 character limit does. That's a really good question, though. Yeah, um, I think you're right. It's, I don't think it, it has as much of a creative effect and a sort of um, identity effect as 140 characters, but it is, it is sort of what made Instagram Instagram. It is, yeah. it is, I don't know. Now it's just a photo sharing. I guess it always was, but, but it all just the feels kids are a little... on it now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't get it. I really don't. It seems like a cross between Facebook and, and Twitter is so what? But these kids today are excited about it. See, now, Allison, you used to get it until the kids thought it was popular, and then you stopped getting it. <laughs> and then My, I found out what it was, and then they moved it. What's that old bit? Who's, who's, right. Is that the Simpsons or something? Wired reports on two more phones trying to capture that elusive mid-range smartphone market in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. OB World Phone. You may see a lot of headlines about this because John Scully, former Apple CEO, is involved in this company. Uh, but they're making two phones, a $199 SF1 and the $129 SJ1.5, designed by Robert Brunner. He's the guy who designed the Beats by Dre headphones, as well as a lot of other great stuff. Along with a 13 megapixel camera and Dolby Surround, the design features a square top rounded bottom and rolled edges, just like me. Obi <laughs> intends to sell both devices in India, Indonesia, Kenya, Nigeria, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Tanzania, the United Arab Emirates, and Vietnam, starting in October, with 50 to 70 more countries to follow. If you were to start a new phone business, would you start with the low end where there's no money? Well, this is not, this is, no, this is why they're doing it, right? This is the middle end. The low end is $40. <laughs> the low end is like the commodity. Okay. The bet is enough people in these markets are starting to make enough money that they want to spend a little more, but they don't want to spend $400 to $700 okay. like they would on an unlocked iPhone. So let's try to capture that market. And I, I think OB is one of the best ones I've seen because it really does look like a high-end phone in design, 
but it's at $199 price. $199 is still expensive in these markets, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, Gadget reports on a post from Max Rosette on Hustle describing how one day while searching for Python Lambda Functionalist Comprehension, <laughs> as one does, on Google, he got a search result saying, you're speaking our language. Up for a challenge? It led him to foo.bar which is a great name, where he completed six different challenges successfully and was rewarded with a call from Google, which led to rounds of interviews and an eventual job. What? Yeah. It's like the last Starfighter. Totally. Ready Player One. Yeah. Like, yeah. This, like, I, I absolutely adore this because it's Google, it's Google engineers somehow interfacing with the recruitment process in a way that made some little bit of magic. And I'm sure there's some downside to this that I'm missing, but it sounds amazing. If you have opted into letting Google, like you're logged in and you're allowing Google to track your searches already, and that's all above board, why not have Google go, hey, you're searching for the kinds of things that, you know, people that we like to employ are searching for, you know? Let's, uh, let's find out if you're up to this. I think that's a great story. And the nerds inherited the earth. Yeah. We noticed that there's an interesting amount of things on your sitting on your desk. It's like <laughs> our our camera has picked up shapes that we find to be compatible with our business ideas. It's like, right. ah. we think you have a face for YouTube. Would you like a job at YouTube? <laughs> yeah, oh, that's how man. I think got her job. Uh, Recode reports Facebook is implementing video matching technology to let copyright owners tell Facebook if a video clip belongs to them, whether it should be taken down or not. Approved partners can upload clips they want to protect. Works similar to YouTube's content ID system. Video licensing agency Jukin and YouTube multi-channel network Fullscreen are two of Facebook's initial launch partners for the technology. Although they do say they have big media partners as well. They just wouldn't name them. I love this. Do you want something to not be on YouTube? Just upload it to YouTube and we'll make sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they upload. this is Facebook saying... Uh, hey guys, we want video. And everybody started posting video on Facebook, which were just YouTube videos that they had ripped off from other people. <laughs> and then suddenly people like Fullscreen said, Facebook, that's not okay. But I guess what this means is Facebook's not lying when they say a lot of, they have a lot of video views because they have enough video views that they had to put in a copyright system. Yeah. I bet it won't make any mistakes either. No. They'll Never. Never. Yeah, the YouTube content ID system is perfect. It never uh, gets in an endless loop telling me to take down my own videos because I cross-posted to them on two channels that I own. <laughs> Don't worry, they got that guy that they just recruited through search results. To, uh, he's on it. <laughs> You're really good at, at resolving internal loops. <laughs> you know what it is. Would you like to take this challenge? All right. Uh, we get a lot of these stories like the one I just mentioned from our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. So get in there and submit some stories for us like Metal Freak did. He submitted the Lily Puting account of Amazon laying off dozens of employees at its Silicon Valley based Lab 125 Development Center. That's the center responsible for building hardware. Wall Street Journal sources say the layoffs are part of a reorganization after the failure of the Fire Phone to sell well. Amazon has also shelved a smart stylus called Nitro, which would have translated notes that you take in handwriting into digital shopping lists. I want that to work. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And a projector called Shimmer and a 14-inch tablet codenamed Project Cairo. Fire Phone work may not be dead though they may have just moved it to seattle under steve kessel according to some of the sources hmm. crazy rest in peace fire phone <laughs> i want to know what that shimmer thing is a projector that sounds awesome i want that i want that <laughs> i mean it's called shimmer why wouldn't you want it what do I, it sounds amazing it sounds yeah. like shimmer uh <laughs> if it works with my newly acquired amazon echo which i have fallen in love with uh I, I yes give me more amazon ecosystem things because i just want to control them all through my voice well and that's the thing right they're they're doing all kinds of stuff in here so what they're saying is these projects are not working very well let's let's lay off a few engineers because they we don't really see any work for them to do, but let's, let's keep doing things. I mean, if they laid off a hundred and some people, which it sounds like they even, didn't even lay off that many, it's, it, it, the quotes were dozens, there's 3,000 people work in that lab. Yeah. So they're still gonna be churning out things like the Amazon Echo, which I agree. I, I think they're building something very interesting there as they just kind of slowly add things that it can do. 
My nightmare, though, is that there's going to be an Amazon Echo 2 much sooner than I want uh, <laughs> because I just got the first one, and, and I, I genuinely think it's awesome. And, and I know people have said that a lot, but I, I was still skeptical even though I'd heard really positive things. And I got it for my birthday this year, and I really like it. It's cool. Yeah. Alexa, like lower temperature to 75. No, don't say that. <laughs> you sound like, like the, the microcosm of all users uh, where you, you want it because it sounds cool and they told you you can't have it anymore. And whatever you have now, you don't want them to come out with anything new because then yours will be old. That's, yeah. You, yeah, you nailed it. That's my, that's that's my it. opinion. I like it. Well, Captain Kipper submitted the CBC report about the EU-funded RoboHow project who recently demonstrated to robots collaborating to make pizzas. A group of cognition-enabled autonomous service bots have been reading recipes and watching videos to learn to do things like flip a pancake. Robots can share knowledge through the OpenEase database. In a demonstration at the Institute for Artificial Intelligence at the University of Bremen, Raphael, the PR2 robot, Bought, brought tools and ingredients to Boxy, which made a pizza. A human put the pizza in the oven. <laughs> I was lit. I was like, really? Like, you could bring tools and roll dough, but you couldn't have had the robot just carry it over to the oven? <laughs> Robots hate ovens. Didn't you know that? Well, That's yeah, their... maybe they were afraid that we, we would get pushed into the oven. Don't let the robot have any access to the oven. You don't <laughs> want to know what will happen. <laughs> Maybe it's like the uh, the lawnmower robots. Always a little scary when it gets that close to uh, full on danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like man. I feel like that's the one place that you want a robot to be doing stuff. Like I can roll dough, but when it comes to like potentially injuring myself on an oven, let the robot <laughs> handle it. Yeah, and and as always, robot enthusiasts, we know the real advance here is that they got the they're learning to work and all of that, and this isn't meant to be like a demonstration for home use, but still. <laughs> But still, something. exactly. But still, I, I'm ready for Robot Chef. <laughs> yeah, this you is, can't this have is it. A, I, I, I really think we are. I'd say ten years. Within ten years, we will all have the ability, if we have enough money, to purchase a home robot. And when I say <sighs> we have enough money, I just mean like it will be a consumer level product. Well, we did that story on we have concerns about the, the hands, the chef hands, the robot yeah. chef hands that they're rolling out, which they say is going to be out in like two or three years. They're going to be very expensive, but in the context of home appliances, which are very expensive, I think it could really take off. And the fact that you, know, it it, you could tie it into TV shows about cooking and all, all of a sudden you just push a button and they're cooking, your robot cooks the exact same thing you're watching on TV. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. DJ Sakani posted the TechCrunch report that T-Mobile Austria has declined to comply with a request from music rights group LSG to block access to the Pirate Bay website. A1 Telecom Austria was ordered to block the site by the Commercial Court of Vienna earlier this month. And then LSG just went off and sent letters to everybody else and said, well, they were court ordered, so you should do it too. And T-Mobile Austria is saying, well, when the court orders us, then we'll do it. We're not going to do it just because you say so. Hmm. Hmm. And, you know, this is one of those things where I think it's getting a lot of attention because people are like, yeah, T-Mobile sticking up for the Pirate Bay. Way to go. But really, that's not what's going on. What T-Mobile <laughs> is saying is we do not just do things because other companies tell us. We, we will do things like this if a court orders us. And my guess is the court will probably get around to ordering them eventually. How often true. And that is a look at the headlines. All right. Here are the facts, ladies and gentlemen. There will be an Apple press event September 9th. It will have something to do with Siri, probably, based on the postcard. Uh, and that's it. That's all we actually know. <laughs> all right. Uh, moving on to next story. Yeah. So we're done here. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, however, uh, as I am want to, to note, Mark Gurman at 9to5Mac is one of the uh, most accurate at cultivating sources and, and separating the wheat from the chaff as far as rumors go. Here's what he's said so far. We're going to see an iPhone 6S, says Mark Gurman, with a 12 megapixel camera, 4K video recording, force touch, animated wallpaper, a front-facing flash, and a, an A9 processor. Now, that front-facing fl flash might just be using the screen to create a white. It may not be an actual LED in there. Oh, interesting. Uh, he's also saying the iPhone 5C will be discontinued and that we might get an Apple TV announcement, although that could happen separately, and that Apple TV would have an App Store, uh, Siri support, and gesture control on a new remote. What do you guys think? 
That's those are the rumors that are out there. Other than the A9 processor, I don't find anything particularly compelling about any of that stuff. I mean, 4K video recording? No, not well. Ryan? Don't care. So I can record two videos and then I'm done with my. I have no more room on my phone now to record. Harry anything. Potter like animated wallpaper? Not. I don't. I mean, I guess that's it's all whiz bang cool, and I'm I'm down for whiz bang cool stuff, but. I don't need 4K recording on my phone. I don't need a nicer camera. I mean, it's nice to get nicer things, sure, but I'm not going to rush out and trade in my my six for a uh, six plus just with this. It feels it doesn't feel like much to me. So I'm an Apple fanboy for sure, but I'm and I'm afraid they're going to take my card away from me. But I have to say that when I hear about phone announcements now, it doesn't matter even if it is an iPhone. I hear the uh, the Charlie Brown teacher. I hear wah 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 wah. wah. You know, I, I hear uh, you know megapixel OLED, uh, you know Retina uh, graphics, drag, uh, Snapdragon, blah blah blah. I, it yeah. just it just all feels like noise now to me. It, it's uh, I mean, sure, it's probably going to be great. If they'd named it seven and told me I couldn't have it, though, that would have been, that would have been a lot better. <laughs> well, and that's it, right? This is the the non uh, form factor year. G- generally, right. what Apple has been doing is they change the form factor, then they add a feature like Siri or the fingerprint uh, Touch ID. That this one, it looks like Force Touch is going to be the the signature feature, probably. Eh? And, and otherwise, the form factor will stay the same. Force Touch. Is that a thing that I care about? I don't know if it is. What? You don't like pressing harder to make different things happen? <laughs> Who don't. doesn't? Well, think about it as a right click, though, as a contextual menu kind of thing. I think that could be cool. That could be useful if you know where to do it. And yeah. if it's implemented across the platform. I, I, what I'm about to say, I also think of Siri and Touch ID, but I have not been using my phone thinking, wow, I really wish I could force touch right now and get a context menu. Like, that just doesn't. That doesn't occur to me. So well, I'm maybe... A, go ahead. I, I'm a lot more interested in, in the Apple TV, and it might be, I should coach this, is it's not my turn to get a new phone, so I might be, just be doing sour grapes with that whole thing. But I'm a lot more interested in the Apple TV as a HomeKit hub. That's where we've just been holding back. We really want to do some, some home automation stuff, but we want to see that hub. I don't even care if it gets the uh, streaming TV deals yet. Uh, but a better a better UI and uh, and some apps in there and a different remote for the love of all things good in this world and as a HomeKit hub, I uh, will be first in line to buy one. Yeah, I don't really love that remote either, but I use a Logitech Harmony as a universal remote, so I never deal with it very often. That's one thing that's bothering me here is if it has some audio built in to the remote or some gesture control that doesn't play well with my universal remote, that actually could be an annoyance for me. But I'm, I'm with you. The idea of an app store and them adding HomeKit into Apple TV, which we don't know if they're going to add HomeKit. That's just, that's just a wish. Please, not, oh, please, oh, you please. Know. Uh, but that, that could be pretty compelling. You're right. Will it work with my Nest? Uh, Will it work with my Amazon Echo? Because yeah. we're, we're getting into for- format wars again, right? Yes, we are. Well, well that's why Amazon hoping- Echo will work with my Nest. I'm hoping that the uh, this you know this verbiage on the invitation about Siri is some kind of indication that there's a leap forward in in voice recognition or some sort of emphasis on that because I really you know I don't use Siri a ton but it feels like just using my Amazon Echo that I can speak to it much more naturally than I do Siri uh, maybe that's me maybe that's more operator error than anything else but I I think that's really the next horizon is making these phones just feel more integrated, more natural, and more easy to use. And I agree with, I agree with you guys that just you know, having a bigger spec, having a 12 me- megapixel camera, it, it, it's all just mumbo jumbo. It doesn't really matter that much. But having some kind of really tangible interface upgrade, I think that would be great. Yeah, I would. I would love to see improvements to Siri. I mean, I, so many of my conversations with her end with me calling her a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> what, Cortana? What? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I well, no, and I bring up Cortana because I think Cortana has and 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 uh, and Google now have set a bar that Siri needs to reach now. And Apple is famous for lagging a little bit behind, but then when they get there, doing it really well. I think now, now that you've pointed this out, Jeff, that the fact that Siri is on the invitation means that Siri will be the highlight feature, not Force Touch, and it will be some kind of proactive alert related situation where it can. Siri will be able to do a lot more for you because it knows more about you. 
Even if I would like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I would even like it. It doesn't even have to know more about me. It has to know more about the question I just finished asking. I think I've mentioned this on the show before, but I remember saying, uh, hey, when is the, the next Laker game on? And it says, oh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's on tomorrow. And, and I'll say, okay, what time? And it'll say, what? <laughs> she right, she's, yeah. she's like yeah, 10, 10 second short, Tom you know, short term no memory idea. loss <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. alright before we finish up speculation there is also the pattern from Apple of having a separate iPad announcement in October do you think that will continue or do you think that the iPad is such a commodity at this point that if there is a new iPad they'll kind of shove it into this announcement I'm worried because I I was just on vacation and I accidentally shattered my iPad screen and I paid to get it replaced. And if there's a new iPad announced, I'll be really upset that I didn't just wait. <laughs> so what you're saying is there will uh, definitely be a new iPad. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't have it or you don't want a new one to come out. One or the other. There you go. Right. Staying true to form. Well, they did book a 7,000-person uh, auditorium for this particular announcement, so it kind of seems like, uh, you know, Siri could be the headline, but there's got to be more than Siri and phones. It, I, I, I really want the Apple TV to be in there. Uh, Apple car. Oh, there you go. Yeah, because you need I, I a big room to I don't drive think the, the car in. I really don't think the capacity of the auditorium has anything to do with it. I could be totally really? wrong. I think it Just means Moscone wasn't available. Uh mm -hmm. You don't think they make the Moscone available for Apple anytime Apple wants the Moscone? Maybe they're going to do something with the movie. Oh, <laughs> the, the, the Steve Jobs movie? Yeah. <laughs> that would be hilarious if they're like, this has nothing to do with phones, guys. It's just the, the movie's coming out. We're all excited about it. Because am, am I imagining it, or does the entire movie like supposedly take place in the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium? It takes place in three <sighs> different announcements. They may not Oh, does it? Enough. I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I'm... I, would love. I'm a huge fan of the iPad, and I feel like the iPad has, as you said, has could have been marginalized and become a commodity at this point. And I don't know what else there is to do with it other than sort of add all the things we've been talking about: force touch, better camera, etc. But uh, I think it would be cool if uh, the iPad was updated in some significant way. Uh, there was rumor, I, I guess, of an, an even larger than the 10-inch one, uh, like a, a, a mega gigantic iPad Plus. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that might be cool. I don't know. Um, I, I think that would be an, a more exciting piece of news, for, for me at least. I still have the third iPad, and it is now starting to get a little slow with mm. certain apps. So I am, I am willing to entertain the idea of replacing that. And it, I don't need much. It just needs to be faster and, and a little slimmer and lighter, honestly, and I'll probably be in. So I don't want it to be 12. I want there to just be a nice new 10. Yeah, I, I, I live on my iPad Air 1, and there I cannot come up with any reason why I need a new one, but, I, but if they came out with a new 9.7-inch, I probably would also, if nothing else, to get the split screen, and, and uh, I don't remember if the new keyboard insertion point thingy, I, I think that, I'm not sure if that works on the iPad Air 1 or not. That might be enough to, to flip me over when iOS 9 comes out. But uh, I, I want one, but I don't know what it needs to do. But it should say, it should say blah, 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 OLED, blah, blah, Snapdragon, blah, blah, blah on yeah. it. A lot. And, and it will. I like uh, Ken from Chicago in the chat room says, the one more thing is Michael Fassbender. <laughs> <laughs> and he's available now. <laughs> All right, our pick of the day comes from Rogue Tess, uh, who wanted us to imagine a stadium camera capturing us leaping out of our seat at the exact moment of a historic perfect game or a hat trick or a championship clinching field goal uh, and wanted to recommend an app called Fan Picks, which partners with pro sports teams and stadiums to do that for you. Full disclosure, her daughter attended LSE with founder Dan Maggie, and she's an uh, and she being Rogue Test is an unabashed fangirl. Uh, but it's kind of a cool idea if you're into the sports and you want that picture of you at the you know the moment that the walk off home run happened. This could be a thing for you to check out. It's called Fan Picks. Maybe it could be you jumping out of your chair during the uh, Apple announcement. Ooh, they should do that with the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium. <laughs> I want Kiss Cam. Kiss Cam. <laughs> kiss Cam at a Kiss concert? There you go. Now you're talking. Okay, you get one, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Allison Nee Carboni. Uh, send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. 
couple of messages before we get out of here. Uh, we were mentioning the idea of 3D printing instruments on yesterday's show. Someone wrote in. Big Jim said, you know, there are some pre-molded plastic instruments that are incredibly cheap. Trombones that cost 200 bucks compared to the metal starters that are about 1,000. Saxophones for 250 bucks compared to 1,200. The problem becomes sound and tone. Right now, the sound for the trombone is not terrible, but the saxophone really sounds like a plastic saxophone. When you're trying to teach students what sound is good and bad, sometimes the instrument does matter. And that is another hurdle for 3D printing instruments, particularly, is you got to have the materials right. And when you're printing an instrument, it's one thing to say, oh, well, we can print a, a Stradivarius-like violin. It's another thing for it to have the proper material to make the tone that you want out of it. Isn't that the difference between a mock-up and the real thing is whether it sounds good? I mean, that, that doesn't seem like a minor part of a musical instrument. Yeah. It's like sort of a major function of it. So it makes yeah. me wonder if you could ever, with a composite, like, you know, the way 3D printers do now, could you ever really get the right tone? Maybe you can. I don't know enough about it, but... Well, even, you know, if you talk to, if you talk to super high-end musicians, they'll say that even instrument to instrument, there's variations. Even Stradivarius yeah. to Stradivarius, there's variations. And I think that's where that sort of intangible, magical human artistry comes in of the guy, you know, crafting the individual instrument. Yeah. Although I guess if you're at the beginner level, uh, or if you're me, you can just print out a, an instrument and then blame everything on the instrument. Well, wow, it's a three-day there you go. instrument. What do you expect? <laughs> Uh, we also got an email from Dante who said, if I went to a website and I had confidence that that site was checking their own ads and weren't serving ones that contained malware or inappropriate content, I would have no problem whitelisting that site. But I've yet to come across a site that either does this or has made me aware that they were doing this. He says, are there examples of cases where organizations have banded together to have a standard for content that is clear and acceptable? Yes, the ESRB for games. Most television or print ads are subject to strict standards on content, volume, length, and size. Why can't websites be held to a similar standard? I'm sure if television shows had flashing moving ads that popped up during the middle of the show asking you to shoot three ducks to win a prize, people would be enraged. Enraged um, or delighted? <laughs> or playing along. <laughs> it's hard to say. They do have flashing moving ads that jump up and people run across the screen. The only difference is, no, you can't shoot at them. Yeah, and you can't stop them. I'm thinking of sports particularly. There's yeah. no jumping at that. Uh, and there is the Internet Advertising Bureau, which does have standards. I think what Dante's saying is there needs to be standards that very strictly say if you are serving malware on your site, even if it's a third-party advertiser providing it, you're responsible for it. And that third-party advertiser is responsible for it. And he's wanting to shine the light of responsibility. So I know we have a few people in advertising in the audience. If, if you could shed some light on where the gap is, maybe, maybe that restriction already exists and it's an enforcement problem, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. And that is it for the show. Great show, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is always so much fun to come and hang out. Yeah, we, absolutely. We Jeff Canada. Robert Young. <laughs> we did. We valiantly filled in. Uh, Justin will hopefully be back. Well, he will be back actually next Friday. Uh, that's one thing to mention. We will be doing the show next Friday from Dragon Con in Atlanta. It will be about a half an hour earlier. I think we're at four o'clock Eastern time. Uh, so at one o'clock Pacific time, but it'll be out in the feed normally. And it will be a live show in front of a live audience. Veronica Belmont will be on, Jonathan Strickland, Justin Robert Young. Uh, so check that out then. For the meantime, thank you, Jeff Kanata. We have concerns.com. Go check it out, folks. Uh, anything in particular to plug? Well, uh, if, you're, if you were listening to this and you're going to the Penny Arcade Expo this weekend in Seattle, it started today. It started right now, but I'm flying there tomorrow morning. We're doing a live We Have Concerns on Saturday night, and my video game show, DLC, we're doing a live panel for that at 1 p.m. on Saturday. So if you happen to be going to PAX, we'd love to see you there. It'd be fun. Go check it out. You will not regret it. Thanks. Allison Sheridan. I do not regret having you on the show either. Uh, I'm glad, <laughs> glad we, I'm glad we got to be on a show at the same time instead of just making you fill in while I'm gone all the time. <laughs> well, that's fun. It's, uh, it, it was fun filling them while you're gone too, but uh, a, a lot more fun when you're here, I think. Podfeet.com. Uh, go check out your podcast. What have you been up to lately? You're always up to something cool. 
Well, this week, uh, I think my hobby is to try to see how many other people's podcasts am I going to be on in a single week. So I, I, I'm on here. I was on Clockwise. Uh, I'm on Mac Voices in about an hour. That's why I moved to make room for this. I'm going to be on a new show called The Parallels, which is uh, Shelley Brisbane's new show, which is uh, a blind person and a sighted person talking about a technology topic that isn't about accessibility. Oh, wow. wow. It'll cool. just be see what happens kind of thing. It sounds like yeah, a, what are a the cool different show. perspectives if there That's are. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, if it comes up. Cool. So we're going to be talking about how you learn uh, technology stuff and just see what happens. We That's, don't know. That's great. Yeah, What's the cool name idea. Of that one again? It's called The Parallels. The just Parallels. started. I think there's one episode out there right now. So this will be, uh, or maybe that was zero. This might be number one. I'm not sure. <laughs> and thank you. might be for a show on Sunday. Yeah. Oh, sorry, what did you say about Clockwise? I said thank Clockwise for accommodating by. Uh, Oh, it was actually Mac Voices who accompanied Oh, it was Mac you. Voices. Thank, that. Mac, thank <laughs> Mac Voices. Well, thank Clockwise, too. They're, they're great. Well, there you go. Uh, that is it for us. Thank you to our patrons, the folks who support the show and make the show possible. Uh, the show is made possible by a bunch of people, more than 5,000 people, either on Patreon.com or on PayPal, giving us a dollar, ten dollars, twenty dollars. As I have learned from We've Have Concerns, I should emphasize there's no maximum. No maximum. You can, you can give as much as you yeah. want. Absolutely. Uh, you can support the show at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support. And whether you uh, support us that way or not, let us know what you think of the show. We have a new survey up at dailytechnewsshow.com slash survey. Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can give us a call, 512-59-DAILY. That's 593-2459. Listen to the show live Monday through Friday at 4.30 Eastern at alphageekradio.com and visit our website, dailytechnewsshow.com. We'll be back tomorrow with Lamar Wilson and Len Peralta. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Great show. Thanks. That was fun, as that always. Fun. What should we name it? Oh, very natural. Oh, boy. I have suggestions. Okay. But I don't have them yet. <laughs> she has <laughs> access to suggestions. <laughs> Help us, Obi Worldwide. You're our only phone. Oh, and we're all no. done. No. Um, we have new iPad <laughs> concerns. <laughs> That's <bad. laughs> Which letter are you suing you? Pizza robots. Uh, Pizza robots. I think that's <laughs> how that's pronounced. Pizza big robot. Sorry, I can't put the pizza have... in the oven, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Apple event seriously? Mm. Mm. Many puns intended. Mm hmm. Microsoft gets a window into Apple. I like that. The force touch is strongly rumored. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a lot of things in one little sentence. Yeah. I even dropped off with Apple just to shorten it. Hmm, well, Any discuss. faves? Any faves? Huh? Huh? What do you like? Oh, man. I like that force touch one. That's pretty good. The force touch is strong. strongly Lee rumored. <laughs> is in parens too i like sorry i can't put the pizza in the oven dave <laughs> i'm sorry i can't too. put the pizza in the oven dave help us obi worldwide you're our only phone but there are two phones dark redeemer doesn't even make sense <laughs> we have new ipad concerns it's pretty good too fire the fire phone <laughs> I'm I'm not hearing a groundswell. Yeah, there's not there's not one that rises above. I like uh, I like uh, the Force Touch one, I think. But you know, that's because I'm a fan of Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, there's also Use the Force Touch. <laughs> I like Force Touch is strongly rumored. For, right. Yeah, that's what Force we're going with. Touch. Any objections? Wait, which one? No the objections. Force Touch is strongly rumored. Yeah. Yay. Yay. And I didn't fall out of my chair. Force <laughs> That's Touch right. Awakens. <laughs> Force Touch Awakens is pretty funny. Uh, I'm just going to level eight. Well, so Jeff, as you recall, probably, uh, we just hang out while I edit, uh, but go whenever you need to.
All right, I think I'm going to go. Uh, I didn't grab lunch before this. So yeah, I mean, go eat, man. But uh, always fun. Thank you for yeah, having me. Thanks for being on. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, go, oh, yeah awesome. And thank you for the nice, nice, nice words about the show. Thank I you. I didn't mean any of it. <laughs> the check's <laughs> in the mail. Sucking up. Okay. Check's in the mail. All right, guys. Take care. Right, see ya. Bye. Let me really think. I mean, we all know Jeff's the stronger part of that team, right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> shots fired. <laughs> you want to come on the show and dispute it, Carbone? <laughs> he will be on the show to dispute it unless I've just gone crazy and have started inventing oh, yeah. awful things that don't exist. Carbone is scheduled for September the... God, he's By so... God, I know he's on this show. He is so funny. God, he's at which point, when he's on the show, I will say, well, you know Anthony's the stronger one of you. <laughs> Hold on. Now this is bugging me because I know I booked him. I just did it. Hey, Tom, have you looked at Alphonic for levelating? No, I haven't. I just started playing around with it. It's supposed to do that new loudness thing all the kids are talking about. The what? Uh, loudness wow. standards. Okay. There's new loudness standards that uh, Paul Figiani is going berserk about it and okay. trying to he's trying to get everybody to you know how you're you're driving in your car or you're jogging and all of a sudden the next podcast is twice as loud as the previous one. Uh, it's mm -hmm. supposed to address that. It's an actually uh, supported tool, but it's. Um, I wrote to him and asked him whether I had to pay the business fee. The the individual fee is only is a hundred bucks for the software. Oh wow. Okay. But the if you have to buy the business one. And I don't know where the cut point is of when you're a business or not. Then it's like four or five hundred bucks. I, I mean, the, usually with licenses like that, I prefer it when they don't try to pretend whether they know you're a business or not, and just say, if you need this many licenses, it's this much. If you're only going to use one, it's this much. Yeah, it's a it's a cross between individual, but it's individual, but it talks about whether you make money doing it. Yeah, I don't know. And that and that's that's a tough one. I I just I mean, I'm gonna yes, have it. I do <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's just kind of a uh, a nice thing to maybe have something in the back pocket in case level eight stops working. Level eight. Yeah. Wait, what's I know. the name of it? Sorry, Al. Alphonic. Alphonic. A U P H O N I C. Alphonic. Okay. I wrote to the guy and said, "Here's me. Do I qualify for individual?" And he said, "Yeah." Oh, so right. he was just like, "Yeah." Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want IBM coming in and paying. I think. Bucks. I think. I like to have it in writing though. I'm one of those people who obeys licenses. What? I know. That's really weird. The question is, what are you doing out there? Said Henry David Thoreau when he got thrown in jail for disagreeing with a license <laughs> for violating um, terms of use. Anthony Carboni, apparently my timeline is all confused because Anthony Carboni was on this show in August. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't rebooked him. Hey, hey man. Oh, uh, you were just thinking of the fact that he was on recently. It's like, it's when you actually book a month or two in advance and then you've been in September so long that you're like, it's still August? <laughs> I guess that's like booker you've people You've just become problem. unstuck in time. Yes, is what's, yeah. that's true. All that's right. also true. I'm That's trying to put right perfect. what once went wrong. Yeah. But I clearly haven't solved that problem yet because I'm still here. Um, quantum leap humor, mm -hmm. people. <laughs> I really can't decide which T-shirt I want. Every time I listen, I think, team dad joke? No dad joke. <laughs> I don't know. Both team so dad funny. joke. It's the, only, it's the only sane choice. Really? But it's so funny when he tells him he can't way you support that is by wearing a team dad joke which makes him even more vigilant more angry and <laughs> appreciate your help on that important issue tom yeah anytime <laughs> i'm happy i also uh am trying to create a guerrilla campaign to encourage people to leave reviews on we have concerns oh because at the end of the show, those who don't know, they're always like, don't leave a review. You should never leave a review. Give us five stars, but don't leave a review. <laughs> so I'm telling people, leave a review. <laughs> Just to irritate them. Grassroots campaign. We should tell people to do that, probably. Yeah, probably. Hey, they... review Daily Tech News Show. Thanks. <laughs> you know, one thing a lot of people don't knew, knew uh, is you can do it once a year. 
Oh, it, you can goes, refresh your good. review as a user once a year. Hmm. Yeah. I should do that. Quantum Gen this fall. Do, 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 do. I can still do that whole theme by Ray Velton Bunch. Wow. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Hi, Ellie. I don't even like babies, and that is the cutest baby I've ever seen. I don't like babies. People no, always don't. say that. And just, I just... just to be clear, how many children do you have? Two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I found them interesting right around four years old and up. Yeah, that's fair. And it waned around seven. No. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those big, ugly adult teeth. Oh, oh my! And my son, after he lost his teeth, made me shave his head. So he looked like he just looked horrible. Looks like a little urchin. Oh, it, 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 like from a camp of some sort, not the good kind. He just oh, no. looked horrible. Oh, Eddie, so, yeah. baby. How much does Veronica want a baby? Jeez, I thought she was going to come take. It. Oh my! Oh, the funniest thing I've heard you guys say was timeshare babies. That is so brilliant. Yeah. Because who wouldn't want that, right? I'll yeah, take I one for a weekend. It solves the sitter problem for the parents. That's right. right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it could talk you out of getting one of your own. Air ba B and baby. Mm -hmm. I also like my Uber baby. I like both both ways. Uh, then also Lyft baby. <laughs> yes. Which is both the name of the service and the thing you have to do to accept the baby. And what you'll get arrested for. Yeah, right. With chocolate baby. <laughs> it's just got all kinds of angles on it. All right, live folks and or people listening on the Treasure Chest full version and or people watching the YouTube video and or people watching the downloaded video. Don't forget to go to dailytechnewsshow.com slash survey. Oh, yeah. And fill out the survey. Thanks, you. Hmm. Thanks, you. <laughs> Thanks, you. <laughs> Uh, thank oh, you to you. the people who have already done so. Uh, we have some very informative, helpful, and entertaining responses already. Is it anonymous? It sounds like I'm reading this, but I am not. <laughs> you can tell if I'm reading something if I sound natural. Or if you sound like Jenny. If I sound, <laughs> if I sound like I'm reading it, it's off the cuff. It's the reverse of usual. Well, I think I am done. I am out of the post. Yay. Alrighty. It was fun. Thank you all. Thank you, Allison. Thanks for filling in last week, too. Sure. My pleasure. Always fun. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Last Starfighter. Totally. Ready Player One. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. This, like, I, I absolutely adore this because it's Google. It's Google engineers somehow interfacing with the recruitment process in a way that made some little bit of magic. And I'm sure there's some downside to this that I'm missing, but it sounds amazing. If you have opted into letting Google, like you're logged in and you're allowing Google to track your searches already, and that's all above board, why not have Google go, hey, you're searching for the kinds of things that, you know, people that we like to employ are searching for, you know? Let's, uh, let's find out if you're up to this. I think that's a great story. And the nerds inherited the earth. Yeah. We noticed that there's an interesting amount of things on your sitting on your desk. It's like <laughs> our our camera has picked up shapes that we find to be compatible with our business ideas. It's like, right. ah. we think you have a face for YouTube. Would you like a job at YouTube? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, how Eileen got her job. Uh, Recode reports Facebook is implementing video matching technology to let copyright owners tell Facebook if a video clip belongs to them, whether it should be taken down or not. Approved partners can upload clips they want to protect. Works similar to YouTube's content ID system. Video licensing agency Jukin and YouTube multi-channel network Fullscreen are two of Facebook's initial launch partners for the technology, although they do say they have big media partners as well. They just wouldn't name them. I love this. Do you want something to not be on YouTube? Just upload it to YouTube and we'll make sure of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they upload. this is Facebook saying... Uh, hey guys, we want video. And everybody started posting video on Facebook, which were just YouTube videos that they had ripped off from other people. <laughs> and then suddenly people like Fullscreen said, Facebook, that's not okay. But I guess what this means is Facebook's not lying when they say a lot of, they have a lot of video views because they have enough video views that they had to put in a copyright system. Yeah. I bet it won't make any mistakes either. No. They'll Never. 
Yeah, the YouTube content ID system is perfect. It never uh, gets in an endless loop telling me to take down my own videos because I cross-posted to them on two channels that I own. <laughs> Don't worry, they got that guy that they just recruited through search results. To, uh, he's on it. <laughs> You're really good at, at resolving internal <laughs> loops. You know what it is. Would you like to take this challenge? All right. Uh, we get a lot of these stories like the one I just mentioned from our subreddit, dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. So get in there and submit some stories for us like Metal Freak did. He submitted the Lily Puting account of Amazon laying off dozens of employees at its Silicon Valley based Lab 125 Development Center. That's the center responsible for building hardware. Wall Street Journal sources say the layoffs are part of a reorganization after the failure of the Fire Phone to sell well. Amazon has also shelved a smart stylus called Nitro, which would have translated notes that you take in handwriting into digital shopping lists. I want that to work. That sounds amazing. Yeah. And a projector called Shimmer and a 14-inch tablet codenamed Project Cairo. Fire Phone work may not be dead though they may have just moved it to seattle under steve kessel according to some of the sources hmm. crazy rest in peace fire phone <laughs> i want to know what that shimmer thing is a projector that sounds awesome i want that i want that <laughs> i'm square and full-size images hooray said your tallest cousin and all your photos of the burj khalifa oh yeah plus all the people who hate portrait pictures and are you know landscape only snobs will be happy now because they won't have to take any portrait pictures ever well that is joe this... be sheridan always said he wouldn't join just because it had square photos so now he wow. has to join is this the equivalent of twitter saying uh, you don't have to do 140 characters anymore <sighs> sort of sort of i don't i think the 140 character thing has more of an effect on how you communicate uh, and, and they did release the 140 character maximum on DMs recently. So there is right. a, a, an analog there, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think Instagram square requirement had as good of a creative effect as the 140 character limit does. That's a really good question though. Yeah, um, I think you're right. It's, I don't think it, it has as much of a creative effect and a sort of um, identity effect as 140 characters, but it is, it is sort of what made Instagram Instagram. It is, yeah. it is. I don't know. Now it's just a photo sharing. I guess it always was, but, but it just all the feels kids are a little... on it now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't get it. I really don't. It seems like a cross between Facebook and, and Twitter is so what? But these kids today are excited about it. See, now, Allison, you used to get it until the kids thought it was popular, and then you stopped getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and then My... I found out what it was, and then they moved it. What's that old bit? Who's, who's, right. Isn't that Simpsons or something? <laughs> Wired reports on two more phones trying to capture that elusive mid-range smartphone market in the Middle East, Africa, and Asia. OB World Phone. You may see a lot of headlines about this because John Scully, former Apple CEO, is involved in this company. Uh, but they're making two phones, a $199 SF1 and the $129 SJ1.5, designed by Robert Brunner. He's the guy who designed the Beats by Dre headphones, as well as a lot of other great stuff. Along with a 13 megapixel camera and Dolby Surround, the design features a square top rounded bottom and rolled edges, just like me. Obi <laughs> intends to sell both devices in India, Indonesia, Kenya, Nigeria, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Tanzania, the United Arab Emirates, and Vietnam, starting in October, with 50 to 70 more countries to follow. If you were to start a new phone business, would you start with the low end where there's no money? Well, this is not, this is no, this is why they're doing it, right? This is the middle end. The low end is $40. <laughs> the low end is like the commodity. Okay. The bet is enough people in these markets are starting to make enough money that they want to spend a little more, but they don't want to spend $400 to $700 okay. like they would on an unlocked iPhone. So let's try to capture that market. And I, I think OB is one of the best ones I've seen because it really does look like a high-end phone in design, but it's at a $199 price. $199 is still expensive in these markets, though. Okay. Yeah. Well, Gadget reports on a post from Max Rosette on Hustle describing how one day while searching for Python Lambda functionalist comprehension, <laughs> as one does, on Google, he got a search result saying, you're speaking our language. Uh, for a challenge, it led him to foo.bar, which is a great name, where he completed six different challenges successfully and was rewarded with a call from Google, which led to rounds of interviews and an eventual job. What? Yeah, it's like the I mean, it's called Shimmer. Why wouldn't you want it? 
Would it, it sounds amazing. It sounds yeah. like Shimmer. Uh, <laughs> if it works with my newly acquired Amazon Echo, which I have fallen in love with, uh, I, I, yes, give me more Amazon ecosystem things because I just want to control them all through my voice. Well, and that's the thing, right? They're, they're doing all kinds of stuff in here. So what they're saying is these projects are not working very well. Let's, let's lay off a few engineers because they, we don't really see any work for them to do, but let's, let's keep doing things. I mean, if they laid off a hundred and some people, which it sounds like they even, didn't even lay off that many, it's, it, it, the quotes were dozens, there's 3,000 people work in that lab. Yeah. So they're still going to be churning out things like the Amazon Echo, which I agree. I, I think they're building something very interesting there as they just kind of slowly add things that it can do. My nightmare, though, is that there's going to be an Amazon Echo 2 much sooner than I want uh, because I just got the first one, and, and I, I genuinely think it's awesome. And, and I know people have said that a lot, but I, I was still skeptical even though I'd heard really positive things. And I got it for my birthday this year, and I really like it. It's cool. Yeah. Alexa, like lower temperature to 75. No, don't say that. You sound like like the the microcosm of all users, uh, where you you want it because it sounds cool, and they told you you can't have it anymore. And whatever you have now, you don't want them to come out with anything new because then yours will be old. That's, yeah, you yeah. you nailed it. That's my that's that's my it. opinion. I like it. Well, Captain Kipper submitted the CBC report about the EU-funded RoboHow project who recently demonstrated to robots collaborating to make pizzas. A group of cognition-enabled autonomous service bots have been reading recipes and watching videos to learn to do things like flip a pancake. Robots can share knowledge through the OpenEase database. In a demonstration at the Institute for Artificial Intelligence at the University of Bremen, Raphael, the PR2 robot, Bought, brought tools and ingredients to Boxy, which made a pizza. A human put the pizza in the oven. <laughs> I was lit. I was like, really? Like, you could bring tools and roll dough, but you couldn't have had the robot just carry it over to the oven? <laughs> Robots hate ovens. Didn't you know that? Well, That's yeah, their... maybe they were afraid that we, we would get pushed into the oven. Don't let the robot have any access to the oven. You don't want to know what will happen. <laughs> Maybe it's like the uh, the lawnmower robots. Always a little scary when it gets that close to uh, full on danger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like man. I feel like that's the one place that you want a robot to be doing stuff. Like I can roll dough, but when it comes to like potentially injuring myself on an oven, let the robot <laughs> handle it. Yeah, and and as always, robot enthusiasts, we know the real advance here is that they got the they're learning to work and all of that, and this isn't meant to be like a demonstration for home use, but still. <laughs> But still, exactly. But still, I, I'm ready for Robot Chef. <laughs> yeah, this you is. Can't this have is it. I, I really think we are. I'd say ten years. Within ten years, we will all have the ability, if we have enough money, to purchase a home robot. And when I say <sighs> we have enough money, I just mean like it will be a consumer level product. Well, we did that story on we have concerns about the, the hands, the chef hands, the robot yeah. chef hands that they're rolling out, which they say is going to be out in like two or three years. They're going to be very expensive, but in the context of home appliances, which are very expensive, I think it could really take off. And the fact that you know it, it you could tie it into... Oh, yeah. Oh, we're live. <laughs> I don't know why I got aggressive about it. It's a very aggressive look. Oh, we're live. You didn't think Alpha Geek? We are now live on Alpha Geek. <clears throat> Yay! Hi, Alpha Geek. And I don't see any important breaking stories quite right this second. So you guys ready? Yes. Ready, Teddy. Let's do this. So Justin Robert Young had to drop out at the last minute. Who wants to be Justin? Who wants to be Robert? <laughs> I want to be young. <laughs> we all want to be young. Jeff. <laughs> I want to be weird. All right, here we go. And in through the nose, and out through the mouth. And remember to find your inner peace. Go to dailytechnewsshow.com/support. And now, your moment of zen. <laughs> This is the Daily Tech News for Thursday, August 27, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Justin Robert Young uh, had an unavoidable appointment, but more than capably filling in, we have Ms. Allison Sheridan, host of the Nocilla Cast. Welcome back to the show, Allison. 
sorry, Tom. I was starting to think you were avoiding me because I was never on when you were on anymore. <laughs> no, we were just using you when you were most needed. <laughs> uh, but also joining us, uh, we're very happy to have Jeff Kanata, host of We Have Concerns. How's it going, man? Going great. How are you doing? Doing very well. I'm glad that we could all team up uh, to fill in for Justin Robert Young because there are three names. So it took three people. It takes three people. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Can I gush shameless, shamelessly about uh, about their show, Tom, for just a second? I oh, think yeah. I'll join We you. Have Concerns is one of the funniest things I have ever listened to. The The episode you guys had about the uh, the mice running on the on the uh, uh, spinning wheels out in the middle of the field, I actually did fall down laughing when I was running. Well, <laughs> you'd have to take that up with our lawyers. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, no I really appreciate it. That's very nice of you to say. The Schmidt Pain Index one, too. That was with the, the bullet thing where, where Anthony kept saying that, don't you really want to know what it feels like to get shot? <laughs> no, yeah. actually, I don't. The cool thing about that episode is that we did that right before Ant-Man, the movie, came out. And then the Schmidt Pain Index was all was over Ant-Man. I felt, like I felt we so smart because yeah. I was a listener of We Have Concerns. I'm like, oh, I awesome. know the Schmidt Pain Index. Everybody <laughs> knows that. No, that's Everybody magic. Knows. That show is magic. The two, you're hysterical together. Thank you very much. Well, let's see how he does at the headlines. That wasn't meant to be a challenge. <laughs> CNET reports Apple sent out an invite to select journalists inviting them to the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco at 10 a.m. September 9th. The invite shows the top of the Apple logo on a blue field with multicolored drop shadows and the phrase, Hey Siri, give us a hint. Saying that phrase to Siri on an iPhone will result in various humorous but uninformative responses. And uh, GeekWire noticed in the po page announcing the stream of the announcement that not only Apple products will be able to play it, but also PCs with Edge on Windows 10 because it supports the HTTP streaming that Apple uses. Wow. You mean they're going to let the majority of their audience actually watch the uh, stream this time? Yeah, but not Chrome users. <laughs> they still aren't relenting on Chrome users. Hey, Siri, give us a hint. Automatically pre-orders the next iPhone for you. Just so you know. Just be aware of that. <laughs> oh, crap. You just did it. <laughs> you just did it to a bunch of people's plugged in iPhones. But, you know, good for sales. The economy nice. needs it. Right. Nice. Well, Fitbit remains the top selling wearable according to data collected by IDC. Reuters reports Fitbit shipped 4.4 million units in Q2 of 2015. Apple has moved into second place with 3.6 million units shipped, and Xiaomi nabbed number three with 3.1 million. Garmin held on to number four with Samsung falling to fifth. Overall shipments of wearables tripled to 18.1 million. So good news for Fitbit that they're still on top, even though they just make fitness tracker and just uh, good news for Apple that they're rocketing up the charts here as well. Good news for Xiaomi uh, that they are also like hitting it hard. Real bad news for Samsung that they fell back beyond Garmin. Yeah, that is Fitbit. Fitbit is the Kleenex of fitness trackers, right? It, it, people say, I want a Fitbit, and sometimes they don't even mean Fitbit. At least yeah. that's my, my anecdotal experience. Do you want a watch or a Fitbit? And they, right. Yeah, they might mean any kind of tracker. I do wish, that, or I hope that uh, Apple catching up or even passing them will make Fitbit play nice with uh, the Apple Watch, though, because I loved the Fitbit community. I had so much fun torturing my friends and being tortured by my friends, and now I've got no social thing with it. I just sit there yelling at my own circles, going, ah, but nobody to make fun of me. But do you need a Fitbit if you have an Apple Watch? I mean, the watch is supposed to do all of those things. But I'm, I don't have the community anymore. That's yeah. the piece I miss. So I don't well, know what Fitbit's thing, right? motivation would be to play with them. That's everything why I've heard is Nike Plus. Yeah, everything I've heard is is that uh, people still use Fitbit and often get wildly different results from their Apple Watch. So people are still sticking with Fitbit because that's the community that kind of feels more fitnessy, just in, you know, integrated fitnessy. And uh, the Apple Watch is like just to corroborate <laughs> almost. Yeah, right. it's not social at all, unfortunately. Yeah, not yet, man. BBC News reports that Google has filed a formal response to antitrust accusations in Europe. Remember, they got an extension on this. Google claims traffic to aggregator websites has risen 227% over the past decade and points to a study it carried out that showed dozens of new price comparison services had begun operation in Europe. They're using that as evidence that, hey, we're not... We're not abusing the marketplace. Google also believes there's no legal or economic basis for treating it like a utility or a monopoly. And so therefore, it should not be subject to antitrust allegations. Your move, EU Competition Commissioner Marguerite Vestager. Looking at you, Marguerite. Always, you're always throwing it to Marguerite, Tom. I know. Well, ever since she took over the job, anyway. <laughs>
Is there a law that one of the big companies has to be in the middle of an antitrust thing with the EU at all times? It feels that way. It's like Microsoft handed the baton and said, Google, why don't you take this for a decade or so? Yeah, yeah. But we're Alphabet now. We can't. We're not. Look over there. <laughs> yeah. Which the letter are you suing, Europe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. In which e alphabet? E and U? <laughs> like, <laughs> likely. Uh, the Verge reports that you can now post full-size landscape and portrait-size photographs on Instagram. Yay! While the default size will still be square, both the Android and iOS apps will now have a format button above the camera roll, which allows you to toggle between...